Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here bringing you this video from my usual location, the home office, but a slightly different setup thanks to my dear friend, uh, Marcus James, fascinating guy. Uh, someone I know in real life and a YouTube subscriber. So it's a bit weird for me because usually the people in real, I, I know in real life aren't aware of my colorful internet existence and the two uh, groups never pass as such. And Marcus is the exception. He's someone I know both from real life and from the wacky world wide web, www. Um, so thanks Marcus for the tip. Uh, cloud, green stuff. Next is this white space. We will get there. It's a slow iterative process. Um, okay, I wanna talk today about, I uploaded a video about a year ago and um, I took it down because I was a little bit shaky about is this really what I, what I wanna go out there and say. And as time has marched on, I'm more confident, I'm more emboldened that I want to say this. I want to talk about content writing. I'm not sure how I'm going to title this video. I might say, do not call yourself a content writer. Why you, why you don't want to call yourself a content writer? Being a content writer is a lousy career. Some permutation because I really do want to, um, it's a strong opinion and uh, I want to get it across. And here I am here I am doing that. So I want to, talk about my career and only for three minutes. So it's, I don't know waffle on about me for this video, but I want to just, I want to talk about my career so I can explain why I've come to this belief or conclusion. So I'm 33 years old, but once upon a time I was, I was a young man full of ambition and I got into writing when I was in college. I was actually studying law because uh, I don't know, I think my family wanted me to have a respectable career, but I loved writing. I'm a creative through and through and my initial plan when I was sort of doing law school in Ireland, um, but not really very enamored by it, was to become a writer. I started writing for the local college newspaper, got obsessed with the writing lifestyle, interviewing people, going to gigs, having a lot of fun with it. Uh, started my own news website, which became sort of a... This is back in the day when not everyone had a website or a blog. Now it's every single person. But So it was a lot of fun. I loved it. And... Um, my plan was actually originally to go into journalism. At some point, I did a second degree in journalism, came back to Ireland and took my first real job, i.e. not my uh, little own ventures, with a good friend of mine called Brendan, very good guy, company called eCanvasser Political Technology. And that was a marketing communications job for a really, really small startup. We were like four people, and, you know, when you're the four person startup and you're the marketing guy, you do it everything. So my job title was marketing communications manager and I did the PR and I did the writing and I did the media monitoring and writing the sales materials and writing the support materials and helping out with the developer. Oh, little great job. Loved it. But I left the job to move to Israel. And that was just a personal thing because I'm Jewish and it was a life dream to move to Israel. So my career kind of took a little bit of a break while I uh, transitioned countries. I came to Israel and after the usual choppiness of the first year adjusting to a new language and culture and work environment and also with only one job under my belt, so not like super experienced, I got another job doing Marcom. Also like that job at an industrial IoT company. And then I started doing, getting before I got my first job here in Israel, I was taking on content writing projects because I was looking for work. Um, I came here with, you know, a small amount of money to cover my Ikea bill. And that was kind of it. So I had to like hit the ground running and start earning pretty quickly. So I did that and I started picking up content writing work because I figured I was actually looking for jobs at the time and companies kept approaching me saying, do you want to freelance for us? So I was like, all right, let's do freelancing, freelance content writing. And that was my introduction to the world of content writing. And since that time, that was about 2015, content has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and content writing has emerged as a very popular career path within marketing. And also as a very, it's a very, very easy thing to freelance, right? If you're a freelance writer these days, there's a high, high likelihood you're doing content writing. What used to be called brand journalism, and everyone's forgotten that word, but in my opinion, brand journalism is almost a more accurate description because, you know, I always say, what is content? Is the back of a cereal box content? Is, uh, so content isn't very descriptive. So 
content and why I so firstly that was 2015 we're in the year 2022 for the past seven years I have been freelancing working in-house marketing communications twice here in Israel um, I have been remote a remote worker uh, halftime contract they've done a lot of different permutations and as I continue doing content writing there is the first year of doing content writing and you know if you're whether you're freelancing or you're trying to make a full-time living out of this or doing it for a company you tend to take on whatever work comes your way you do the kind of scrappy seo keyword stuffing rubbishy content work that no one really wants for content mills and then you work your way up the food chain and that's how it was for me you increase your rates you get better clients you build up a portfolio and there came a point when i left my um marketing communications job here in israel because i had enough freelance work after starting it before the job i had enough freelance work then that i could leave the job to do it full time and i did that for about a year and then i kind of began thinking this is very limiting very limited and very limiting marketing communications as i said a lot of different aspects to it but let's broaden this back out now from my own particular uh, context of my career experience here's why i think content writing is not a good um for that to be anyone's job title i would firstly recommend against that for that for, for anyone to say content writing is my career choice that's what i do for a living those are all things i've been very very careful to not describe myself as i also now try to all, at all times avoid using the word freelance because uh i prefer self-employment it's a business it's not a little side venture for uh for me but content writing specifically denotes a very low level skill and it grossly undersells here, here, here's the crux of what, of what i'm trying to the, the point i'm trying to get across here describing oneself as a content writer uh having a job title as a content writer in most cases unless it's a really really entry level limited job grossly undersells the value that writers bring to companies and there's a huge problem in the writing industry which i'm not really involved in anymore um, but there's a huge problem of undervaluing right the thing about writing is that it's got a few things not going for it as a job or as a freelance career in brand journalism let's say firstly barriers to entry are very low there's no certification process it's not licensed secondly there is a lot of people that can do it because it's easy to become a content writer it also means there's a lot of content writers out there and something i noticed when i've been doing this for you know three five years is companies don't always want to pay more for better they just want someone who's barely competent so here's what i i had there, there, there was a point in time and i remember the meeting distinctly i met a friend here who lives near me in jerusalem he's also a marketer and um we met for you know coffee and to have a chat and to catch up and i asked him at one point you know would you he was telling me about the projects he was working on and i was telling him about the projects i was working on he's a branding consultant and we were talking about the type of the quantity of money and you know for content writing you're probably talking about four figure sums maybe at a stretch i'm doing this project they're paying me 400 bucks for this blog they're paying me one thousand dollars for this white paper and we were talking about the same industry we we're talking about the technology industry we were talking about not the same clients but very similar clients but there was an enormous disparity in the sums of money i was trying to run a business on by cobbling together five hundred dollars five hundred dollars five hundred dollars and the amount my friend was able to charge and that was kind of the eureka moments it was actually that and i also had a client that raised a uh, series b like 10 million in funding and they were trying to get me down by a hundred dollars on you know some writing deliverable a blog post so i was coming into this meeting with my friend frustrated saying he's older more experienced so i kind of looked to him as a mentor figure and i said look what's going on here look we're doing similar work similar clients you have more experience but not vastly more experience but you're charging you know ten thousand dollar retainers and i'm getting clients pushing back on five hundred dollars because they want to pay four hundred dollars what's going on here it doesn't really make sense so we had a great discussion and it, it really goes it really boils down to value and the way a lot of 
companies perceive writing. Writing, when you come and position yourself as a writer, you're saying, I can write competent English. You're reducing your professional package and your acumen and your credibility to the level of really anyone that can write English, which is probably hundreds of millions of people in the world. Now, what what is the higher level work that writers do? Something, another eureka moment you'll have, if you haven't had this yet in your career, when you go into companies and you begin hiring freelancers, and I've been also doing this for a while, and you hire branding agencies and you hire other types of agencies, content agencies, you'll discover that a lot of the work they do is exactly what you're doing for as a writer. And you'll start to see these invoices. I, gu- I guarantee this will happen at, at some point. If it hasn't happened to you already, you'll see the invoices and you'll have the same moment I had of you're seeing these people, other marketers charging a multiple of what you can charge as a writer. And you'll say, hey, this isn't fair. So let me explain. It comes back again to skill set. The what is the skill of a writer? Now, the best way to make money in writing, in my experience anyway, is to do something, is to narrow narrow yourself down from one of many to one of few. And I know this sounds like not rocket science or not game-changing commentary, but indulge me for just a few more minutes, right? It's a translation exercise. So if you're dealing with very complicated clients in the world of let's start with B2B tech, but that's too broad again. So let's go down to cybersecurity, right? If you know, because I, I'm using this as, as an example, because I happen to have done a bit of work in, in the cybersec space and it's well paid, right? So if you're doing work for a cybersecurity company, they're selling B2B and they want you to write meaty stuff, okay? When you get to that point, you can have a conversation with a client and say, charge not exactly what you want, but charge decent money. And the reason that you can get to that point as a writer without rebranding yourself and keeping the writer hat on is because you're, you've now positioned yourself not just as a writer, you're a subject matter expert and a writer. So I would say writers, there's no such thing really as a writer. The only people who hire writers are the type of clients and the type of companies, the type of clients you don't want to have and the type of companies you don't want to work for. The only only people who hire writers are people who just need uh, gr- grammatically coherent copy written. And by the way, this is, there's a lot of chatter at the moment now about artificial intelligence, AI, and this, if, you know, there's discussion within writing communities for a couple of years now, uh, what effect are AI bots going to have on uh, on freelance writing? Can we continue as a freelance writer when the bots get good? That's the concern, the AI, the AI bots. And my answer, if you want to hear it, is it will be a good thing if that happens because the type of bots, the type of work that the bots are going to, the AI chatbots, the AI automated writing bots, the type of work they're going to make redundant is the type of soul destroying, crushing, keyword stuffing, hapless work that turns a lot of people off freelance writing for good reason because it's miserable and it's lowly paid and clients don't want to do it. So yeah, that type of stuff's probably going to be go to the chatbots. So it's going to be a good thing for writers because writers are going to collectively wake up and realize at some point that if you are serious about your profession you have a lot more to offer than writers so my sort of thinking would be well do you know marketing strategy and are you leveraging that skill in your writing work without knowing it right it it could be the case do you've experienced that do you have do you have public relations experience and are you leveraging that expertise in the writing work you do, it can happen. Do you have SEO experience and are you leveraging that work in the writing? So when you start looking at it like this, the actual writing work is the last little thing, right? You have this, you have the subject matter experience, you have the marketing strategy experience and you can write, okay, now you've got a whole package that's valuable. But if people only see the end product, the writing, that's why writers get, I don't want to say screwed over, but they get the small breadcrumbs in the marketing budget because the big the big chunks of the pie are going to the strategist, the marketing strategist in the agency work. Uh, and what you'll commonly see is that writing is actually a subcontracted job, right? There's an agency above you um, charging a lot for strategy and uh, public relations perhaps, and they'll fish out the writing projects to a writer. 
So the best thing you can do as a writer is elevate yourself to the next level on the food chain and don't describe yourself as a writer because just my experience, you're going to be under underpaid, underappreciated and under frustrated. What did I do after going from Marcom to freelance writing and thinking that was the right thing to do because it was specializing and being very specific about the scope of work I offer? I don't do anything except writing. I am a writer. That's what I did. And horrible mistake, horrible move. But I don't regret it because it's all part of my journey. And for the last year that I was, last year, 2021 really, I actually spent most of that year, instead of doing writing projects, doing larger projects, more consulting projects with content strategy plus writing as deliverables. I did almost no pure writing work in 2021 and 2022. I'm doing um, a job now for someone in the nonprofit sector that is a communications job. Uh, which with writing as a component, but far from the whole job. And it's, firstly, it's much more enjoyable. Secondly, the value that you bring is much clearer. And it's great to not be operating that level of dealing with companies trying to minimize their spend, save every penny, argue over nickel and dimes, because they see what you do as very, very small in the last piece um, in, the, in the process that's going to actually bring them revenue. And therefore, they want to pay less for it. That's the reason you'll see companies raising $10 million series Bs and uh, trying to haggle their writer down by $10. So I have to go now and think about how do I wanna, how, what title do I wanna use for this YouTube video that's gonna get this thought across, but I'm gonna stop speaking here. If you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, spending the last 15 minutes with me here. If you like the backdrop, let me know as well. I'm quite proud of it. And yeah, lots of friends in freelance writing and I think that a lot of them could brand themselves slightly differently on think about their um, value offering and USP slightly differently, repackage their services. And that I think is a way to get past bump clients, not just raising your rates because that's typically what writers think is the be all and end all solution. Just charge more, just charge more. You'll get rid of all the cheap people. It doesn't really work like that when there's still a lot of writers and you're still only ex explaining what you do according to the, uh, the mode through which you ultimately deliver value. All right, guys, I'm gonna end here. I'd appreciate any thoughts or comments. Do drop me a uh, do drop me a comment on YouTube or wherever else I post this video. Thank you guys for watching. And if you want to get more videos from me on marketing, Linux technology, Israel, many different topics, feel free to hit the subscribe button and uh, join me for the adventure here on YouTube. Have a great day.